So it's still midday life. Thanks for staying with us. It's now time for us to do some business updates and start with the Ghana Electrical Contractors Association is advocating the separation of electrical works from main contracts. Now, they believe this would reduce the spate of fire incidents attributed to electrical wiring. Well, we'll bring you that update later, but we also take another update now from Talo, where Talo Oil would halt the production of oil for two weeks, starting from September 20, 2013. And the operations manager of the company, Bob Geska, explains the development is to allow the company's maintenance on some vessels to increase production. Now, Sandra Marquis was there, and she has the update. The company extracts 100,000 barrels of oil a day in their operations from the offshore Jubilee field. In a meeting with the Parliamentary Select Committee on Finance, the operations manager at Talo Oil, Bob Keska, explained the extraction of oil would be halted for two weeks. The development is to do a maintenance work on the vessels in order to increase the production of oil in a day. We have to maintain class and certification of that vessel. In all these vessels that we produce oil and gas through, we have to open them up, have a look inside them, make sure that they're uh, certified. And we're shutting it down for two weeks for routine inspection and maintenance. So we will not be producing anything for two weeks. And Gala is not going to lose oil out of it because we'd already planned to do that this year. So in our production plans, we have a two-week shutdown. The area manager of Talo Oil, Joseph Klemesu, explained, despite the challenges of the company, they would meet their targets for the year. If we have a legislators knowing exactly what to do here, it's very good. At least they saw firsthand what we do. They asked the right questions. They met the, the right people. We take in localization very seriously. They saw that almost everything we do here as local people backing it. A member of the Finance Committee in Parliament, Anthony Akutose, said Parliament would ensure challenges of the company are resolved. We, we never really get a chance to examine what is it they are doing. It's only when you've seen it a bit that you can begin to appreciate the enormity of the type of activity that is going on. We who are in the legislature just need to be able to have additional evidence to support such enterprises so that when we are confronted with questions by our constituents, we have the facts, not just hearsay. So we're still looking at that commodity. Talk about oil and Africa's wealthiest man, Aliko Dangote, has signed a multi-billion dollar deal with banks to finance the building of an oil refinery in Nigeria. Now the refinery would be the largest in Africa, turning Nigeria into a petroleum exporter. Nigeria is Africa's biggest oil producer, but lacks refining capacity and has to import most of its fuel. Although it has two refineries in the Port Harcourt area, neither runs at full capacity. Now the country is often hit by fuel shortages and conflict over control of its oil world and it would be built in southwest Nigeria. Aliko Dangote projects it would become operational in 2016. Mr. Dangote signed a $3.3 billion loan deal with local and foreign banks to build a refinery as well as a fertilizer and petrochemical plant. Now the entire venture would also cost $9 billion with $3 billion in equity from Dangote Industries and $6 billion to be raised in loan capital. And still looking at some international business updates, leaders of the G20 nations are gathering for a meeting at which they are expected to sign an agreement to fight tax avoidance by multinationals. The group formally backed plans to tackle international tax avoidance and evasion at its meeting in July. And that will do for business.